Hey everybody, I'm with my very good friend John Howard again today. Uh, and John has more accolades and cycling uh, uh, success than probably anybody else on the planet. If it's a race, he's won it, I guarantee you. Uh, not only that, but uh, uh, he uh, holds the world uh, land speed record on a bike. Uh, and that's important because that subject's going to come up again in a little while. John, thanks for spending a few minutes with well, us. Thank you, Dr. Ryan. I understand that you have a student and protege that is uh, got you pretty excited. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I'm very proud of Denise Mueller. She um, and I started working together when she was 14. And we won, I say we, she won 11 national championships. I helped her along with another coach uh, and twice on the podium at the world championships in, in a variety of different disciplines of, of the sport, including mountain biking, downhill mountain biking, very dangerous. Uh, it takes a lot of technique to be successful at it. Uh, Denise did this for about five or six years, then retired from cycling completely, uh, had a family, three boys, and uh, 20, approximately 25 years later, she made a return to the sport after not doing a whole lot of cycling during that period of time. And um, she immediately picked it up again, and I assisted her. Uh, she has won back-to-back -back national criterium championships and uh, we talked about breaking the bicycle sp land speed record uh, about five years ago, and, it, and, and as she described, describes it, it was like throwing a match on a puddle of gasoline. It, 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 it uh, really focused on things that she's very good at, which is bike handling and uh, being able to produce a large amount of wattage in a very short period of time. So uh, the, the speed record, for, for those who have no idea what we're talking about, is a paced effort behind a racing car. And the car essentially bores a hole through the wind, and uh, her job will be to sit in the protected void of that car, the draft, if you will, mm -hmm. and gradually accelerate up to uh, a speed that hopefully will get her uh, my record of 152 miles per hour, and, wow. and I would, would point out that this is the first time in, in the history of cycling that a woman has attempted to uh, set a speed record, a uh, high speed record mm -hmm. uh, for pace cycling. Do you think she can do it? Absolutely. I'm sure she can. Well, in that case, I'm anxious to meet her. Well, folks, here she is, the legend. Soon to be. <laughs> Soon to be. Well, I have. If, if John says you can do it, you can do it. He's been at this a while. Oh, yes. So tell me a little bit about yourself. How, how did you, what's the passion for cycling? I mean, instead of surfing or something else. <laughs> well, there's a passion for going fast and ah. adrenaline. And I think that's the bottom line that's ah. underneath everything. Because um, I also race cars and all sorts of other fun adrenaline things and used to de be downhill mountain bike racer also. So, um, but the foundation of my sports has always been cycling since I started that when I was 14 years old. And ironically, John Howard was my coach when I was 14 oh. when I first started bike racing. And so the irony of coming back around and getting mm -hmm. back into cycling, it was just basically like finding your long lost love of that sport yeah. and, and coming back to it and finding out that you still can be pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, at our research institute, we have been saying for decades that the way, not only the way to health and wellness, but the way to optimal athletic performance is by using what we call the trilogy of good health, proper diet, proper exercise and training, and proper dietary supplements uh, to embellish and to ensure that your body's uh, soft tissues have everything that they need. Because obviously, at your level of training and competition, uh, what you're doing to yourself physically uh, is far more than the weekend warrior or the, the, the guy who sits on the couch. But the point is, is that we can learn from your physiology the benefits of these things, and then we can then translate those into 
less active and sedentary individuals. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, what, what do you feel the role that, that supplementation, like, like you know, protein supplements, full spectrum nutrition, well, how do you feel that that's contributed to your level of uh, achievement? Well, as you said, when you get to a higher level of athletics, all those areas are so important. And to me, the best way to describe it is it fills in the blanks. It fills mm -hmm. in what's missing. I mean, in our standard standard diet, whether you're an athlete, and, and well, I guess if you're watching every little ounce that's going into your body, you can be pretty much on top of things, but you're still going to be missing certain elements of it. Um, especially as a weekend warrior or an everyday person, you're going to miss huge chunks of it. And for I, I've been a supplement user for my entire life. My dad was going way back into, I believe it was the uh, 50s, when it was very new and it was questionable and people didn't know mm -hmm. much about it, but he very much believed in that. So I grew up around supplements and doing everything that is necessary to fill in all those little blanks along the way. But like I said, when you get to a higher level of an athlete, you need those blanks filled in because a little missing piece here or there can be the difference between first and second. You bet. <laughs> and you know, what people don't realize is that you don't have to be performing at your level or training at your level to benefit from supplements. Because, in fact, the, the, the so-called weekend warrior is probably uh, in greater potential peril because they're sedentary all week. Then they go out on the golf course or then they take their, their bike out or they do this and that. And then for four days after that, they're, 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 they're full of lactic acid and they can't walk. And they, so I think that things like knowing how that, that high amounts of vitamin C, for example, help to remove lactic acid. And all of these things that we've learned, we can help anybody at any level to recover from training in a fraction of the time, which I think is, is valuable for anybody. Yep. So I, I hear rumor uh, that you're going to try to break your coach's record. Oh, where'd you hear that? I don't no. know. It's in the air, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, can you do it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and he has faith in me, which, which is the helpful, irony yeah. is he had, when he first had mentioned this to me, we were already, I was just getting back into cycling and doing it for fun, doing a, a, a ride from San Francisco to San Diego with a local charity called the Challenge Athletes Foundation. And we were training for this and somehow he got this idea, because <laughs> it is his idea, um, about the fact that no other woman has done this. And when he mentioned it, um, and I think he alluded to this earlier, it was like a, a match being thrown into a puddle of gasoline. Yeah, that did and it for immediately you. <laughs> I was on board. Yeah. And with that, he also had made a couple caveats. He wanted to get me back into bike racing, win a national championship to sort of solidify my, my, uh, mm -hmm. my abilities before mm -hmm. we do this record. Well, when he said that, I went, oh, no, 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 no. I want to do the record. I don't want to have to do this. <laughs> but he knew at that point in time what I was capable of that I didn't even have the faith in myself. Yeah. And lo and behold, I did. I got back into bike racing, and I've won two more national championships. So he has definitely a, an ability to see what's capable, and if he says I can do it, and I believe I can, oh. but he was the one who believed before I did. So well, we're we're all. We're, when, when when is this attempt going to take place? September tenth through thirteenth at the uh -huh. Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. Uh, I believe that's where John set his record, wasn't it? Yep, it's the yeah. mecca of everything fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only time I go over 100 miles an hour is on takeoff in a jet. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm, I'm a little too... Yeah. So I think, I think it's interesting, maybe uh, people don't understand that, that uh, the, the financial uh, uh, obligation of, of preparing for something like this, the time, the training, the equipment, the, 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 it all takes away from the rest of your life. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, is there some way that, that uh, people, you know, watching today can, can help you reach this goal? Oh, absolutely. And, and to back up, you are absolutely right that the, not only the financial cost, but the time commitment cost, and it is, it costs for time away from our working lives, our yeah. families yeah. and things of that nature, but it's all for that goal that we're, we're going towards. But we do have uh, several opportunities for everybody from sponsorship level down to the everyday person to be able to help support because we have custom built um, vehicle, custom built bike. I mean, the, the, all the things that have to be custom built for this particular project, it's not a regular bicycle and a regular vehicle. It is starts as a regular vehicle, but all the customization. So all that does cost. 
And so what we do is we have our website, which is www.theprojectspeed.com. <laughs> And that website has a donation information and also contact information because if there are anybody out there that wants to be a sponsor and actually from a business standpoint be part of the project, mm -hmm. we welcome that also. Okay, great. Well, all right, ladies, and I suppose there are some guys watching. So um, <laughs> if you guys uh, want to see this very lovely lady succeed and if you ladies want to support a fellow lady, um, you go on that website and if it's five dollars ten dollars a hundred dollars corporate sponsorship every little bit helps because yeah. i can tell you in the 1970s i was doing bodybuilding and powerlifting, uh, and it was an obsession uh, and i didn't get a whole lot of other things done in my life and uh, uh, but it was worth every every ache and pain and i'm sure for you it is too absolutely well, I want to thank you so much for taking out a few minutes of oh, your obviously you. very busy life. And uh, why don't you give that website one more time for people? Sure. It's theprojectspeed.com. And we also have Facebook, but all the links start from theprojectspeed.com. There you are. We'll keep you posted. This is a pre-interview. After September, we'll be back. Thanks for listening. Thank you.